Behold, the future. I see you and I making things. <laughs> I foresee a future. <laughs> <laughs> it's dueling profits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who can sound the creepiest? What's really weird yeah. is why is every prophet old? Is it because it, like, it's supposed to be wise with age? Why can't it be well, like, hey, you know what I see? I see like a whole like, you know, enchilada. You know, like what? <laughs> That would be why people wouldn't listen to the prophet oh, if he were like that. Right. But, it's, but the, 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 the Greek one, the the oracle, she was uh, young. I forget what her name is. But anyway, and nobody would believe her. That was the curse. Right, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But you're right. Very often there there are these old types, <laughs> which makes perfect sense for us to be prophets. But yes. what we are going to do with our future mm. is really exciting to me. Yes. Because we've actually been committed to this purpose, this mission of Andromeda Productions for years. And it takes a long time to actually get stuff done, but that doesn't mean you give up. Right. And also, um, what's exciting is that it's the future, but it's also today. Right. You got to start the future now. We are doing stuff every day. Yes. Working towards the future. We're not absolutely just making plans. We are <laughs> no, we, no. We are working on it. So uh, that's exciting. <laughs> that's exciting for me. Yeah, for me too. And I can't think of anything better to do than to get right back into this conversation about where we're going with Andromeda. Yes. Welcome to the Heart of the Cards, a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. Hey, this is Dan Green. And Eric Stewart. And welcome to part two of episode 20, Andromeda. I love that you keep track. At least someone does. Oh, I don't know if those numbers are correct. but I, oh, no, I know, but you say it so there. convincingly that I, that well, I believe I you. Actor. It's, <laughs> yeah, that's, even, that's even better. I think it's pronounced actor. <laughs> actor. <laughs> I am an actor. Um, yes. <laughs> so we're, we're talking about, like, what is down the road for Andromeda Productions. I will mm-hmm. preface this by saying, do not hold us to everything that we say. <laughs> no, because no. These if are you, ideas. If you gave the two of us, like, that genie in the lamp with all, you know, you got your three wishes, <laughs> we'd have, like, seven. And it would really, you know, because of all the ideas that we'd want to work on. Um, so we have to kind of be... Um, Keep some things close to the vest because yes. it might change. Um, we That's could true. we could make a big long list right now, but I think that we are an ever evolving creative company. It is actually literally factually true that right? not too many months ago, I shot you a text with about seven different ideas for shows we could do for YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's great because we work on one project and ideas come from that that are not even related to it. That that yes. you know, you start to think uh, I think about the way that your 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 artwork uh developed with Crossing the Gods, you started yeah. to work with different technologies, started to work in a way where you showed mm-hmm. uh both mm-hmm. Anthony and and myself your capabilities as they grew. And then, of course, other ideas pop into everybody's head of, well, if you can do well, that, can do this. then oh, right, wait right. a second, now we can also do that. Um, that's, and that's exciting. That's why it's, yeah, that's why it's you know, it's really so exciting. But, it's, it, it's almost but I, like- And, I, and I, love, I love learning all those things. Right, right. It's kind of like being given yeah. like, a, like a brand new like synthesizer keyboard, right? And very you much, go, very much And like you that. go, well, here's the on button. Great. Does it sound like a piano? Uh-huh. But here's all these other sounds that it can make. And you're like, what? I can make all these <laughs> other sounds? Oh, well, I've got a million things I want to do. That's, that's how I look at um, being creative and also wanting yeah. to learn how to be creative. Yeah. Well, I had familiarity with Photoshop, but not a lot of familiarity, some with After Effects. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I learned some Blender and uh, looking at some Unreal Engine stuff. 
And yeah, there's just so many great technologies for visual storytelling now. Yeah, and I love I love the work that you do on on your your iPad. I I am Oh, thanks. I yeah, am, that makes I am it a lot amazed. Easier. I'm amazed. I mean, yes, the technology is the technology, but I'm amazed at how quickly you've picked up how to use that tool. Well, I don't know if I've done it quickly, but I'm I'm really happy. Oh, I don't know, man. You send me a a sketch of something and I go, that looks kind of cool. And then about an hour later, it's like a finished poster. And I'm like, okay, man, you know, back off. You know, I get it. (laughs) Um, Once you have the figure, the line work down, the rest of the Oh, please. I find to be. Just take the compliment (laughs) for a change. I'm awesome. Um, awesome. You're right. But yeah, so so when, when I think about like the things that we can do as a company and yeah. and I will I will constantly include the people everyone. we get to work with. Yeah, but I mean, the, yeah. We know I, so many talented people. Well, I want to include I want to include the listener in my uh approach to all of this. I want them to feel yeah. like we are uh part of the same production meeting. The mm-hmm. the idea is there are no dumb ideas. Like Mm-hmm. If you have an idea, you want to do a music video, you want to shoot mm-hmm. a short film, you want to record an audiobook, you want whatever, you want to draw a sketch, you want to do, you want to paint a, a, a picture, a still life, I don't, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. These are all things as a creative production company, um, nothing's off limits to us. I feel like mm-hmm. you and I, we spitball, we throw out ideas or we, we throw out like, um, you might give us a great starting point and then it's like, well, what could we turn that into? What format do we want to present that cool idea? You know, start with a, with a great storyline or, or, uh, you know, a really cool concept. It's like, that's neat. I like that. What do you want it to be? Do you want it to be a painting? Do you want it to be a short story? What do you want to do with that character or that uh, the conceptual story that you've uh, wrapped around that character? And I love mm-hmm. that there are no limits to the way we think about what we can do. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm I, I think. I think. You know, I'm. I'm always going to reference music stuff, but like. One of the reasons, you know, my band is called the Eric Stewart Band is because I never wanted to be stuck in the one genre of music that if my band were called like, you know, you know, killer slaughter murder guy, then you'd be like, oh, he, he plays heavy metal <laughs> or he's a, or he's a very angry folk singer. Um, but but I wanted it to be whatever I felt like. Right. So I feel mm-hmm. like a drama to productions is whatever we feel like. If you came to me tomorrow and said, I want to make a short film based on this. I think this mm-hmm. should go under the Audromeda umbrella. I wouldn't say, come on, man. We're an, a, like an illustrated audio drama company. That's what we do. Or mm-hmm. we only do audiobooks. No, we do whatever we want to do. That's creative. Right. right. That we think is, is interesting uh, and rewarding to explore. And yeah. And and I, I like that we can be a source for other creativity to to play with us. Yes, yes. Like not everything has to be written by me. No, no. <laughs> and, and but it's been very it's been very good that we have a source of these great ideas. Um, but sure. you've said from the beginning, I don't want you've said this so that you don't want to be the um, the only source of this stuff, and that's great. No. Um, yeah. But but there's a there's also a formula that works for us, um, right now, um, where that mm-hmm. does make sense. Mm-hmm. But if yes, if someone mm-hmm. else came to us with an amazing idea that fit with you know our soul our sensibilities and yeah, yeah. we thought like yeah, this is something we would love to be a part of or, or tell this story or whatever. Um, sure. Yeah, I wouldn't sure. have a problem, you know, helping someone else create something, you know, as our team. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's the same thing. I think that both of us enjoy the collaboration, but it's it has to be the right the right fit in terms of what we connect with, not the right fit of that it's in the wrong category of presentation. Right, right. We are amenable to many different forms of expression for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it feels like we've just 
really put ourselves out there. I mean, it's been since July, right? And some might say, well, you know, you had the Andromeda Productions webpage up years before that, which is true, but we really weren't releasing anything. No. You know? Uh, and so I feel like it's only in these last several months, less than a year, that uh, we're actually having something to show for Andromeda. We might even print a book. Right. We talked about that, too. And... and- yeah. These are all things that come from other ideas that we had or other other things that we've worked on. Um, mm-hmm. Your new comic book idea that you're working on, too. Oh, yeah. The Mr. Strix, which yeah. was just yeah. a drawing exercise. Just, exactly. But then the idea kept on, it kept on niggling at me. Yeah. 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 And, and I've and, always, that, I, I mentioned in the previous episode about broken promises to myself. And mm-hmm. definitely printing an actual comic book has been a long time promise to myself. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. And I have I have other comic book ideas, but Mister Strix is actually something that I I could tell a satisfying story. I think in about forty four pages or sixty pages or so. So it's one complete story. Yeah, and and we could call it accomplished. Yeah, and you and I think our conversation the other day about that was you know like I wonder if it, you know we were like well you know people are going to be interested in this and that and that whatever and we we talk like this is a cool idea it's you know does this storyline make sense. And mm-hmm. I think I said something to you of the effect of, but you have to do it. Like, yes. you, you just, you just, whether have, or not, I, I do. Like, I do you just have to have do it. To do it. Um, making, do. making those promises to yourself, um, you know, without that pressure of, you know, where it lands, just doing it um, yes. is really, really important. I would be surprised um, and disappointed if at the end of your journey, you mm. had not created a comic book of your own. At least one. At yeah. least one. Like, it's 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 part of who you it. are. <laughs> it's true. When you it's first true. showed I, me I your drawings... Feel, it would be like... Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, when you first sh- showed me your drawings, uh, or the first time I even discovered your your talent as an artist, um, yeah, I think it was we've the... We've known each other for years, but... but yeah. I think it was the, the playbill that you did for oh, that's um, right. a great that's little right. play. Um, <laughs> the and David I was Ives like, plays. And I was yeah. like, who did this? And they were like, oh, that's Dan. And I was like, what? So um, <laughs> it's one of those, it's one of those things where um, it's, it's in your soul. It's who you are. Yeah. You are yeah. A, a very talented actor and you're a very talented um, director and writer. And all of those things are so things exciting. that you do well. But it's like if someone asked me the question, who are you? I think you are an artist first. Like, I just... Interesting. I really think that's, like, who who you are, who your soul is. The same way that I feel like I'm a, I'm a songwriter. Like, mm-hmm. that's what that's who I am. I Because I want to mm-hmm. tell a story. Mm-hmm. Now, you might be telling that story in your drawings, but I just... And I discovered that later in our friendship. Mm-hmm. I, that is not how you were first introduced to me. So right. it was something I discovered and I'm like, okay, well, this seems like where all that creativity in his head comes from. Like, this is it. Inspired by mm-hmm. comics. And, you know, the things that you... In- and this is just from my perspective as an outsider, but someone that knows you. Yeah, yeah. Your, yeah. The things you enjoy, the fandom, the way you like to, to, to the, the the stories you you connect uh, with, th- there is something about being an artist that is the catalyst to all of it. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, and um, I I think I've said before on on previous podcasts that I I wouldn't be satisfied if I only was one of those things. Mm-hmm. Right. I have. Uh, if I, I'm not saying that I'm the greatest actor in the world, obviously not. But if that was the only thing I did, if that's the only thing I allowed myself to do, mm-hmm. I would feel very unfulfilled, for sure. Right, right. The drawing is a way of of capturing, uh, literally like a snapshot of the world you're imagining inside. Yes, right? yes. Driven yeah. by your imagination, you, you you can recreate or try to uh, share what's in your head right. Right. with the world. Right. And we do that. Which is something that you can't, and writing is like this too, It's it, you can't really achieve that with acting. 
Right. We can we can interpret and we can, you know, someone's words, even if they're our own words, we can do that. I just feel like if you presented me with like the Mona Lisa, if you presented me with a painting. Mm hmm. What is it? Was it Rashomon where everybody has a different version of what they see? Yes. Right? Yes. Every person that walks in front of that painting has a different take on it. Right. And that's art. <laughs> you made them think, you made them feel. I just feel like that that's who you are. You are, let me draw you a drawing. Let me sketch you a little thing. Let me do this and I'm going to affect you. I'm going to make you think. I don't even need to tell you who this character is or anything about them. I am going to mm. present this. And what's nice is you are doing things where you are interpreting and it's and expanding on that stuff for us for certain things. But um, I don't know. That's just my take on on getting to know you and, and another creative mind, you know, over these over these last 20 some odd years now. Um, it's just I think you're you're uh, an artist and I'm not going to say whether it's a graphic artist. Or, you're just you're an artist. That's <laughs> right, what right. you are first to me. Thanks, man. And I have never been so consistently supported uh, as as I have by you, you know, in terms of, I mean, people say nice things and, you know, I've, I've had teachers and directors and other collaborators, but uh, the this concentration of however many years it's been um, with you as sort of like, uh, I mean, sometimes I imagine you as like, this is a reference to Rocky, yeah. which is a film about boxing from a long time ago. <laughs> But you, you, in some ways, you're kind of like Mickey. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, totally. Like, you know. He's a wrecking machine rock. <laughs> <laughs> right. You bolster me up and, and, and you also uh, challenge. And uh, that's all all so generous of you to, well, to we, offer. We, it's been, it, it, look, we, we, we do that for each other. And, and for those that are out there and, and, and you, you, you are looking for your, your people, your, your support group, the other creative yeah. minds, the most important thing, I mean, even if you're just working by yourself, I understand. And that's great. I mean, I do a lot, I do writing by myself. That's what I, that's what I do. Um, mm -hmm. But if you are thinking of collaborating with people, the most important thing is that there is um, that they care about you and your passion and your energy to create mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. there's ulterior motives where it's, you know, it's competition or it's whatever it may be. Um, mm -hmm. That's the unhealthy creative environment. So yes, right, does it right. sound like a like a bro love fest when Dan and I talk and and compliment each other? <laughs> it's because uh, you know finding joy in someone else doing what they love to do makes you feel mm -hmm. better too. Um, Absolutely, it's, it's Absolutely. really it's really nice to witness that uh, creativity and that expression from someone else. Um, too many right. times we're told not to do these things or, or, or it's, you know, you to be take, guarded or to take the yeah. safe route or, or, you know, there's too many of this, too many of that, you know, we don't need more artists in the world. Um, but whatever oh your gosh. pursuit is, finding that support mm -hmm. team that's not just saying, yeah, this is great, this is great, and just to say it, but it's actually paying attention. Um, really taking a look. That's right. really, really, really important. Um, yeah. And they don't yeah. have to be an expert in the field that you're in. They just need mm -hmm. to uh, They just need to know you. They just need to understand you. Um, so that's, that's just an and important And collaboration... Quality. Almost always, collaboration is going to make you better. Mm -hmm. it, you're going to, and maybe because you're working with somebody who's a real jerk, but they, but still, you're learning uh, uh, how to how to navigate that. But also, some people who are being jerks are still saying true things that you that can help you. That's so true. It's important to also not let not let your feelings get too hurt, and and try to treat it more objectively. My friend. My dear friend Phil, who is not an example of a jerk at all, no. is a graphic designer, and he. But he's also an illustrator, and so I run my images by him 
uh, because he really understands that world. He understands mm-hmm. what that amounts to, and he'll have you know specific kinds of things, suggestions. Right. And even if I don't agree, I always do it. I always take the note. I try it. Right. Right. And very often, uh, it's a, a note I'm glad I explored. Um, well, I should say it's always a note I'm glad I explored, and very often I actually keep it. Right. Right. I, I don't always keep every every change, but but it's great having that there, that sounding board. And uh, you don't wait for yourself to be perfect. It's never going to happen. And you're never you're you're never going to get better if you don't work. And I'm sure you ask him because you actually want his opinion. Absolutely. I'm not just looking for affirmation. Yes. There, that, that's another important thing is that if you come to somebody and say, I'd love to get your feedback on something, then really mean mm-hmm. that. Otherwise, don't ask, right? Right. Uh, if, you, if you only want affirmation, that's normal. That's maybe, you know, maybe you're just, that's all you're ready for is encouragement. Mm-hmm. Um, and also be ready to, to fight for your idea. Uh, you mentioned the jerk. For sure. Well, for the sure. jerk is a great person to have had to deal with in those creative right. uh, environments. Because you have to advocate. Because, you yeah, have to defend. find a way to defend your creative idea without right. getting into a screaming match. Um, without being defensive. Yes. <laughs> right. Find a way to pr- to promote that, to, pr- to present it so that- Here are ma- the strengths. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's a great exercise. I don't recommend it's what you do every day of your life. Um, but it's definitely something to learn from. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've all had to deal with that. But but in, in our situation, in Andromeda, um, you have mm-hmm. uh, creative people that are um, supportive, who are also challenging, but who also mm-hmm. have one goal. And our one goal is let's be creative and, and enjoy what we do. So yeah, th- th- there's not this business plan of it's got to hit this many, you know, this number that so many people have to view this or we got to, you know, make this much money on this and that. All of those things are important for a company. All of those things are important if you're trying to become mm-hmm. an entrepreneur and you're, you're, you're creating your own business. Okay. Mm-hmm. But- Mm-hmm. You also have to find the joy in what you're doing, and some of the projects that you Absolutely. that you have you know presented as as future ideas, whether it's a comic book, whether it's a whether we do a, an audio book, whether it's uh, whether mm-hmm. it's a film, whether it's I don't know, it's a it's an a- animated rock opera. I don't know. Okay, um, <laughs> whatever we we want to do, um, I think that that uh, that camaraderie is. Will it, it, it is is so strong when it's will we have fun doing it? I think we talked For about sure. something the other day, a, a, an idea that was presented to us that we thought was a good idea, but it didn't resonate with us as I mm-hmm. want to do this. Now, and we ha- you'll you'll develop listeners out there. Yeah. You will develop a sense of what really compels you. Hmm. You'll instantly know whether it's speaking to you in a way that drives those creative juices to drive you forward toward that idea. Yeah. We were talking about something where at the end of the day, would you want to sit back and say, I made that. Like, I'm really happy I made that and I enjoyed making it. Those... Which is something we can say about uh, this podcast so far. Yep. We completed the hero's journey, which is something of, I think, as you said, a season finale or yes, <laughs> something like that, which totally made sense in the context. And I like that we did that. I can mm-hmm. look back on that and say these were good conversations. Yeah. And that also gives you impetus to keep moving forward. You're, you've proven to yourself that you can create something to a degree of satisfaction that you feel good about. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, then, of course, now you feel more capable to do the same in perhaps another way, a different form of expression or maybe more of the same kind of expression. But it's wonderful to have that foundation at your feet where you've gone past the can I pull this off and you're more on the footing of what else? What can I do next? Mm hmm. And we've got a lot yeah. of things that we want to do next, um, so I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Which wait. is not to say that we're scattered. We're we're pretty focused. Yeah, it's yes. like the podcast is the every week thing, 
and and we have these other projects that de- that develop more incrementally. We're also very busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we haven't given up our careers no. to only do this. And so you know I, that I we really even, must enjoy yeah. it because we, it's not like we have all the time in the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, right. I I returned from. From L.A. on mon- 5 a.m. on Monday morning, and I leave for Dallas tomorrow at <laughs> right? 5, 6. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm very grateful to have all of that, but it's, yeah. So so I will say this. Um, uh, for those of you who um, we get a chance to uh, meet when we do our live appearances and we and we get a chance to chat with you and, and, uh, and hear your stories as well. Uh, my challenge to you is this, and I say this when I'm actually <laughs> at the events. My challenge or, to do you, you have like a do you have a rapier as you're saying? That's this, it. Or? I'm holding it up right now. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 actually, yeah, I, it, I just like to rattle sabers is what I want to do. Um, Very good. I'm going to I'm going to say this as to 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 anyone who's even semi interested in in being a creative force in this world or for themselves is that yes. There are so many creative people that attend these conventions with us. Uh, I'm always blown away by some of the some of the art, some of the the, mm-hmm. the fan fiction stories, the um, the mm-hmm. cosplay, all of the creativity that all is of there. That. It's all amazing. That. And I've said this before yeah. in panels where I'll I'll say to the crowd, "Okay, who writes here?" And every you know a bunch of people raise their hand. Yeah. Who plays music? Yeah. They raise their hand. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. All these, and I say, "All right, now." Look around the room. You've got production companies all right here. You guys should be talking mm-hmm. to each other. So my challenge to mm-hmm. you is this. If you are going to an event and you're interested in collaborating and you're interested in in pursuing your passion the way that we are, talk to each other about not just the shows you like and the reason you chose that cosplay or which voice actor you want to meet. Hopefully it's Eric Stewart. Um, But also (laughs) talk about some ideas you have, some original ideas with other people, Mm. because Mm -hmm. you might Mm -hmm. be surprised that person might be an artist who is looking for a great story to animate Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. whatever the way that it all falls into place. You'll never know if you don't talk to each other about creativity. Yeah, it's true. In Orlando, there was this um, young man who let me know that he's voicing a character in, I'm not sure if it's going to be a, some sort of form of web series, mm-hmm. but they had already put together a, a couple of comics uh, to kick the idea off. And, and um, there was uh, almost a year ago, uh, another uh, young man developed this game form and with, you know, um, cards, but mm-hmm. also had a comic related to it. And, I love and it that. It was just so cool to, yeah, me too. I love that stuff. And, and well, and actually, we're also going to have, um, I, I, I was thinking, what I didn't say is this guy also had like this uh, baseball cap with, you know, the the, uh, the name of the, sh- the, the property or the mm-hmm. franchise uh, on it. And, um, and you know, we've, we've imagined some of that stuff for Crossing the Gods. Yep. Um, but, uh, which nobody will care about because they don't understand what it pertains I'll wear to. It. But, <laughs> I'll wear it. but, um, but we're also, you know, uh, exploring the idea of uh, different kinds of merch and and when whatever. Um, and, sure, uh, like an action yeah, figure too. I mean, and that's because I want to play with the action figures. I. I just, I do too. Okay, I'm a collector of sorts. I, I mean, and, I've always uh, wanted to have. I mean, I've had characters that are that are uh, that, uh, that ones I voiced. played, I voiced, right. and I've even had some people have made me pops of me, which is really cool, of real that's, me. That's so sweet. But so true. to have an action figure of a character that Andromeda created, yeah, that tangible. Like blacksmith is going to be a sick action figure. Oh man, I, I like. I would yeah. love that. I would love that. Yeah. Anyway, a T-shirt, all that stuff. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I, yeah hopefully well, I don't see the people are out there. They're percolating with creativity when we go to these things. Yes. Yes. And they're fa- they're fans of a form of creative expression, which mm-hmm. you know I think <laughs> makes those things make sense. As are right? we. You're already dealing with. Yeah, and and so it's a community of people who are celebrating creative expression. Yes. So it, it only makes sense that they would have some of those same drives, some of those same ideas. I think one of the best things a story can do is 
uh, excite your imagination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll have and, them stay um, on us so that we keep doing what mm-hmm. we're doing, and we'll stay on them right. so that they present some really Start. cool ideas to the world. Right. So so they do too. Yes. And I, I think that's a great also element of... When we decide to talk about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt, when we decide to talk about that every week, Mm -hmm. it's almost like a form of therapy. I don't mean psychotherapy, but I mean like almost like physical therapy. It's, it's, you know, it it helps me. It gets my blood running. It it keeps me in the game. Sure. It gives me, you know, uh, a connection point and keeps me honest in a sense. I um, really want to make sure that I'm not just saying things that sound like they're the right things to say about expressing yourself creatively, I need to be actually doing them. And I need to feel honest about that. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's nice to have that so, reminder. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You like doing I got this. something to do. Yeah. And you right. like it. I got a plan. One of the smartest things that you incorporated in the earliest days of Andromeda Productions was the insistence on weekly meetings. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't put it on the schedule, it's not going to get done. Yeah, you move I it think around. It's something that you said more, yeah. than, more than once. Yeah, yeah. and and that, I mean that's really what got that whole thing recorded. And it wouldn't have happened any other way. No, it would not. No, it would not have. And I would not have created uh, the parts that I created if I uh, didn't have the expectation from you guys that I was going to produce something. Mm-hmm. That was a positive form of pressure. Yes, have. and let's let's really you, you highlight. You want to the, feel like you have all the time in the world. Yes, Sorry, go ahead. The, I was going to say let's highlight the word positive. So, you yeah, yeah. you you had a deadline because you wanted that. Yes, you didn't have a deadline because there was this fear of 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 a, a, you know a threat we, or you're going to get right. We fired. had a window of opportunity that was going to close. Or, no, yes, that well, I would be you, fired. You right. gave yourself right. that deadline so that you just would be you know motivated to do it. But uh, it's also because you enjoyed doing it. So that's another thing for, for sure. those that are trying to come up with some sort of schedule for themselves. Um, it's not mm. always easy to schedule creativity, and it's and it's especially not easy no, to no, no, ske- no. to schedule no. uh, coming up with you know. I've been in meetings where people are trying to come up with a new concept, an idea in a, in a, in a, in a, in a committee. Um, there's a very famous uh, old <laughs> advertising uh, statement that I, uh, th- that I love to use. A camel is a horse designed by a committee. So, yes. uh, uh, so you know, some of those meetings, it's like, oh, my goodness, that's not even where we started. Now what, what, what do we end up with? Another camel? Mm-hmm. We don't need this. Right. So right. Um, right. giving yourself that structure is not always so easy to collaborate, but, um, it might help. It might help. It helped us. Yeah. And I think that there's a relationship between doing work as a way of at least getting something out there, but then you have to work the ideas. You have to know what's crap and what actually resonates. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I could, you could, we could generic, we could plug together a few tropes and come up with a very generic show. I'm sure. Right. Yes. But but not neither of us would be satisfied by no. that. Right. It has to it has to speak to you in some way. So you have it has to speak to you in some way so that you have something to say when you're creating it. Hmm. I agree. You know what I mean, I agree. And one of the last uh, one of the most recent times I got sort of possessed by a spirit of <laughs> I must create <laughs> was a couple of years ago. It was during the pandemic. I was recording a lot of audio books. And I was uh, listening to this YouTuber, and uh, he decided to have a uh, short story contest. And so a short story is 10,000 words or less. Um, it, for, for our listeners, that's about a little over an hour's worth of audiobook, if, if, you're, uh, think, if you want to think of it that way. And so anyway, um, so I, I developed this little idea. And then I kept working on it, and then I really got into it. And it was, you know, and it was for a competition, so I wanted, I did, I wanted to look as best I, as I could, right? I didn't necessarily think that I was going to win, but I didn't want to look like an embarrassment. So I asked Anthony to read it, and Greg to read it, and I asked my my wife's sister to read it, and a couple of other. I asked my friend Phil, and I was like taking in the feedback, and a lot of it was consistent. And I was like, yeah, okay, I should change this and change that. And uh, anyway, so I ended up with something that I felt positive about, that I felt good about. And there were days, there were some days 
where literally I couldn't think of anything else. I was just in that vortex. You know what that's like mm-hmm. when you got something that's totally just possessing you. And um, that was, it was so um, compelling. I'm not saying that the end result is so compelling to everybody who reads it, but as a creative process for me, it was like being taken over by a form of gravity and just falling toward it. And anyway, so nothing ever became of that uh, competition. It, it got, I think, delayed or just it didn't happen. But I had this you know, short story, and, and we're going to produce it as an audio book. Mm-hmm. Um, that will probably be out, that'll be out before Crossing the Gods because it's much easier. The, the story's already written. It's much easier to produce something in strictly audio, mm-hmm. right? Um, so... Anyway, but also, I uh, one of the people I narrate for is this guy Mark Graney, and he writes the Gray Man series, which is always on the New York Times bestseller list. And they did a movie that I loved uh, it. I Netflix. loved it. And, yeah, yeah. So I've been I I've done all the Gray Man books, and I think we're on next one is like number thirteen or whatever. But he's a really nice guy, and and so just the other day I said, hey. Mark, would you mind reading this little short story? It's totally okay if you don't want to. Right. And he got back to me. He was like, sure, I'd love to. I was like, awesome. And now I don't expect him to give me mad props, right? Mm-hmm. But even just to get uh, a reaction from somebody who is a, an accomplished author, um, I would value whatever he had to say. Mm-hmm. Probably even uh, more if it was critical. Constructive, but, cr- you know. That's something that you can use. Right. Well, right. you also respect his work. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Meaning that you're you're getting you're getting feedback from someone that you not only has proven that I respect himself, that the, in the, in the that, you know yes. the, the, the real world, but you also respect their work as a creative. So that's great. That's sure. really cool. Oh no, very For sure. Great stories. Great stories. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you think, Eric? Should we wrap this up for today? Yeah. Um, we should. This has been good. I'm, I hope that people have a better understanding of what Audromeda Productions is and will be. Um, and could become. Yes. We, and yeah. how Dan and I uh, are, are, are trying to uh, have our hero's journey together on a lot of <laughs> this stuff. Right. Um, That's right. We're encouraging each other to keep making those steps. Um, but yeah, so even even we are following in our log line um, for the, heart Absolutely. Of, for the heart of the cards, yes. Absolutely. And, you know, dealing with what you're dealt is not... I did, I never meant that to be a reference of only the bad things. No. Uh, Sometimes you get a full house. Exactly. And that's who you are to me, my friend. Uh, you are a full house kind of friend. Thanks. And when thanks, he's wonderful. Th- <laughs> 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 Although I also am fond of Adrian. But, um, so... <laughs> Eric Stewart and Dan but, Green reenact Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> what a boxing film always needed. Right? An audio just, transfer. Just an audio book. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, who's winning? I don't know. All I hear is... <laughs> uh, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <laughs> With no narrator. So, That's a whole new concept for Andromeda Productions. <laughs> right. Um, anyway. Anyway. But... but uh, <laughs> we will not be doing that these... audiobook, but we, 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 yeah, it would be a fun concept. Right. But dealing, d- dealing with what you're dealt also means recognizing when something good is going on and, and how to make the most of it, you know, and obviously appreciate it and acknowledge it because not every day is like that. Mm-hmm. And not everything is like that. So thank you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks to our listeners that uh, we are so encouraged by when we interact with you uh, and whether it's comments on online or when we have the privilege of seeing you in person at some of these events and, and you share with us that you've been listening to the heart of the cards and, and you're reacting to it in a way that you feel is, is good for you. Uh, that means so much to us. And, and just know that that is only more fuel for the fire for the next time that we can have a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what you're dealt. Thanks for listening to The Heart of the Cards with Dan Green and Eric Stewart. We hope this conversation in some way spoke to you. Whatever your journey, we look forward to crossing paths again in the next episode. This is Veronica Taylor, and on behalf of Andromeda Productions, we wish you well. Andromeda, always a sound 
choice.